Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Grace Family Church. Come on, guys. We'd like to welcome all our campuses. And those that's watching online, let us know where you're watching from. You're a part of the family. Thank you for joining us online. And thank you for being here this weekend, guys. Uh, we're kicking off a new series this weekend called Get Your Ship Together. Get your ship together. That's what we came up with. For me to kick the series off, right? Get your, okay. But it's, it's a relationship series, guys. All jokes aside, it's a relationship series there. We, we want to focus on relationships. Here's why. Last month, we talked about uh, discovering grace. And a part of discovering grace was this, that our vision and mission at Grace Family Church is to help families follow Jesus. Everybody say that with me. Help families follow Jesus. That's why we exist. That's why we do everything we do. That's why we teach the word. That's why we do worship the way we do. That's why we have kids ministry. Everything we do is to help families follow Jesus. And how many of you know that the basis, foundationally, relation, the foundational relationship for families is marriage? And so if we're going to talk about being relational, we got to talk about marriage, guys. Because marriage is the foundational relationship in marriage. And I was wondering, like, God, why in the world would I be the person to be up here? Because last week, my wife and I had an argument in the parking lot. And I was like, she was like, yeah, you can tell everybody about the argument. It's okay, Ralph, because it's good marriage material. So if you're married in here, you realize that we argue sometimes. If you're married in here, you realize that sometimes, man, we, we kind of don't honor the way that we should, and we may not pay all the respect that we should, and sometimes we're in our flesh, or we're in our sinful nature, and we're burned out, and we, for whatever reason, sometimes we may not be doing the right things that we should. In fact, I would look around the room and online and say this, any perfect people in the room, you came to the wrong place, because we're all imperfect. And you take two broken people, two imperfect people, and put them together, what do you have? An imperfect marriage. And I can tell you about imperfect marriages because mine has been one from the beginning. I remember getting on one D and asking my wife to marry me. And she waited. And she waited. And I'm so glad that we didn't have like that engagement thing where they come with the camera and she said yes. And everybody's like, because she waited like 20 minutes before she said yes. She had to think about it because... I can honestly say I wasn't marriage material when we met. In fact, to the point that we had our wedding 30 years this April. We had our wedding, yeah, man, 30 years this April. And everyone was like betting that we wouldn't make it. The, the line was like, hey, I give them five months. I give them a year. Them jokers ain't going to make it past the honeymoon. I put my money on it. And I'm like... I didn't know about it until later, but I'm like, wow. But I understand because we were extremely imperfect and neither one of us had a relationship with God and we both came from broken homes. And so the percentage or the, or the, the likelihood that we would be successful was very, very low. But marriage takes work, guys, but it's worth it. Marriage takes work and it's worth it. And so our purpose today it's to help our family. Everybody say, I want to help my family follow Jesus. And marriage plays a role in that. And so you might be here and you're saying, man, Ralph, I'm single. Um, you know, this, you can just kind of skip me with this one. Or maybe I've been divorced, but you never know what God is going to bring back into your life. I was talking to one of my single friends earlier. He was like, Ralph, don't forget us, man. I'm, I'm getting up in age, but I'm waiting on Mrs. Wright because I love the Lord. And hopefully one day I can get married. So this message is relevant to you no matter what stage you're in. And so because we're broken people, you know, on that night when we got married, everybody brought us presents. You know, they give you the pots, the pans, the dishes, and all the stuff, and they brought all the stuff. And we opened every single gift except for the gift that God gave us. We didn't even talk about what marriage was until like three or four years later. And so we started to unpack this box after we got saved. And Tracy got saved first, and then I... Followed a few months later, and we started to open the box and said, God, what is marriage all about? And we started to unpack everything. And we started to get all these pieces together. And anytime that you put something together, you take it all out of the box and you set it aside 
and you grab your manual, your instruction manual. And I want you to grab your instruction manual. Come on, everybody, grab your instruction manual. And you're going to bring this back every week because it's going to tell us how to build marriages. But this weekend, we're going to talk about marriage. And you know one of the first things it tells you when you read the instruction manual? Read the instruction manual. Now, if you're me, you look at that bed and you're like, man, I can do that. I don't need no man. Forget that. But my wife will come by and she'll say, Ralph, and I have all the pieces there and I'm trying to figure it out on my own. She's like, have you read the instructions? And I think that's what God says to us. When we, try, when we go into marriage and we get married, you know, we got to keep the instructions in front of us. We got to keep what God says about marriage in front of us. In fact, God says this about marriage and, and many of us start uh, in a broken place like we started. You know, in a broken place means that we're, we're a fallen people in a fallen world. We're broken people, guys. And here's the reality of it. What God says about us, when anybody remember Adam and Eve in the garden? Y'all remember that story? And Adam and Eve, they were in the garden and, and, and God created everything and he did his thing and he created man and woman in his image and likeness. In fact, right here, write this down. Write down Genesis 1 through 3. You want to read that? That's your first homework assignment on marriage. Read Genesis 1 through 3. But he creates everything and he tells the man, he says, listen, I'm going to create you and I'm going to pluck you out of eternity and place you in a garden. Your garden is your marriage. It's your family. And he says, I want you men, I want you to serve and protect in that garden. And ladies, when you came to the beautiful conference, you heard a great message on being Ezer Connecto. And Ezer Connecto, ladies, means that you're a helper or an aid that's suitable for the man. And suitable means this, Connecto, that means you're in front of him. So you're side by side and in front, side by side and in front. Now watch this, meaning you're face to face. Men, she's designed to be in your face. That's why she's always in your face. But when sin comes in, sin says, get out my face. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. It says what the curse said. Hey, I'm ruling over you. You just do what I tell you to do. You sit over there and shut up. And then she's like, yeah, well, I'm trying to control it. I'm trying to cope. And so in our sinful nature, being face to face is very difficult. And so your first thing in marriage is this. Stay face to face. Stay eyeball to eyeball. Keep looking at each other. Do the things that you first did. Do the things that you did, and I'm, I'm kind of dating myself, when you wanted to call the radio show and be like, hey, this is Ralph. I'm just thinking about my baby Tracy, and could you play our favorite? Y'all remember that? Why do we stop doing that when we get married? Why, why, do, why do we stop thinking about her and Wishing that I would play a song. Here's this song that reminds me of you. Is it because we already have them? We already arrived. Because here's the thing. Every marriage is a work in progress. There's different seasons and there's a work in progress. And so, so in, in progress, I'm sorry. So how can we, here's some healthy strategies for helping your marriage relationship to grow. Here we go. You guys ready for this? Point number one. Marriage is a leaving from your past. Marriage is leaving from your past. Marriage is leaving from your past. Genesis 2.24 says, For this reason a man shall leave. Everybody say leave. His father and mother. Here's the question for you married couples. Here's a question for you as a person, not just married couples. What was your family like? Was there a lot of arguments? Was there a lot of, in my household, was there a lot of cutting each other off when they were trying to talk and no one really listened to each other and it was always... And I can tell you, in my household, it was like that. Everybody was fighting to be heard. So guess what I brought into my marriage? I didn't listen very well. I was always thinking about what I'm going to say next. And then guess what my boys started to do? The same thing. And so now, when we get together as family, I'm like, guys, can we just let your mom and your sister talk for a second? They're trying to get their point across. What kind of unhealthy patterns did you have in your family? What kind of emotional triggers do you have? Some of us, you know, some of us are hood and we holy. The hood part is like, let me tell you, I'm about to tell you off. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't going to just be talking to me all kind of way. That's an emotion. Like, that's emotional. You can't be riding down the highway with your middle finger out the window. Come on now. What faulty beliefs about relationships did you grow up with? 
Men, did you see a lot of men cheating on their wife? That's what I grew up around. Like every man that I knew was cheating on their wife. Did you grow up around women who were just, you know, they had, they had a side dude. Like if you see that kind of thing, you got to leave that, bro. You're leaving from your past. And there's some health, unhealthy behaviors that we have. In 2 Timothy 2.22, it says this, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Don't run from youthful lust. Run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Anything that might trigger a youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace, and, and, and enjoy the companionship. Everybody say companionship. Of those who call on the Lord in their pure heart. Who are you hanging out with? Are you enjoying the companionship of those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart? Who's in your accountability group? Like, inventory that. Because there's some things that we're doing that we, like, look, here's the thing. As a single person, you shouldn't be doing. There's some things we got to run from. That pornography, we got to run from that. Man, porn, that, that, that we got to run from that. We, we got to run from that gambling addiction. We got to run from that. We can't bring that because that will contaminate other people. We got to run from them wild parties and the turn up and the websites and the social media and it's people sliding in your DMs, that old girlfriend. We got to run from that. You know, I remember one time me and my friend, Eugene, he's a, he's a Christian now. You know, we were in Puerto Rico and, and I'm, in the, I'm in the club with him. We about to fight some dudes. And I'm married with three kids at home. I'm like, how foolish. I'm a grown man with three kids and a wife, and I'm in the club about to fight. Man, we got to run from some things, and we got to pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace in companionship. Everybody say in companionship. And here's what it speaks to, building your relationship with God in community. See, we don't serve a God that's like, hey, just you and I. We don't serve it. God never intended for any of us to walk alone. And listen to this exchange, man. Love y'all. 18 to 29, you got to be, on Tuesday night, you at, you at Carol Wood at the exchange. Because they're, they're, they're in community. They're loving God in community. Ladies, you, you, you're in accountability with other women. Men, we're in accountability with other men. We're building our relationship with God in community. The second thing is this. Marriage is a joining together in the present. Marriages are joining together in the present. You know, as we unpack marriage and we look at it, these two pieces of wood are not identical. They're different. You know, in fact, they come from different backgrounds. And when they decide to come together, I, if I had my opportunity, I would ask you to look at your hand and see your fingerprints. God only created one you. And when you come together, that means God only created one marriage like yours. And so we're running around looking at marriages and we're like, no, there's only one marriage like yours. There's only one chance for a marriage to be like yours. And then we're joining together in the present. And so we take, take a little bit of glue. And how many of y'all know that God is the glue that holds our marriage together? God is the glue that holds our marriage together. In fact, the Bible says this. The Bible says that the two will become fresh. They will cling to each other. They'll be joined together. They stick like crazy glue. And so God becomes the glue in our marriage. And when we add God to those two individuals that have come together, what you get is a seal. But see, you can't just add God to it, guys. You got a clip. How many of you guys know that anytime you add glue to something, that you have to apply pressure? You got to have pressure. You can't just put the glue on it. Oh, God, we just, holy matrimony, we invite you in, and that's it. No, no, no. We need some pressure, some positive pressure. Watch this. So we clip down the glue that God gave us with love. Write that down. That's the first clip. We apply pressure with love, eros. You know, there's, two, there's several kinds of love. We like to talk about agape. But you know what? Eros should be aimed at your spouse. Your arrows is for one person. You know what another, another clip would be? Forgiveness. Pressure. Stick it together, man. I need some forgiveness in my relationship. The third one is mercy. See, we don't talk about mercy. We talk about grace a lot. But you know what, guys? Mercy 
is an amazing thing. Mercy is withholding what they do reserve, deserve. Have you ever looked at your spouse or your girlfriend on a serious date? You're like, man, they deserve for me to like. But you know what? I'm going to withhold that. I'm going to withhold that. The last clip is this, is grace. That's the pressure that we have. God is the center. God is applying the glue. He's sticking us together. But we got to add those four attributes to our relationship in order for us to stick. Now, you might be sitting there, you're saying, Ralph, well, what are the steps? The steps are this. One individual having their relationship with God. Here's how you join together in the present. Invite God into your life individually. You. Single, married, divorced, you. Invite God into your relationship. Secondly, we want to invite God into our relationship. We want to invite God into our relationship. Here's a scary one. Pray together. Pray together. Here, as simple as this. Hey, what's on your mind and on your heart, honey? I would like to talk to God about us. God, help us in this season. Help us because, man, we're, I, I can tell you right now, anybody ever heard of the crazy cycle? Let me explain it to you. It's like when you get in an argument and you can't figure out how to get off the roller coaster. I call it the crazy cycle. It's like you just wake up mad and you wake up the next day mad and you're like, you mad because they asked you what you want to eat and you mad because they don't know what you want to eat and you just, it's the crazy cycle. You know how you break the crazy cycle? I'm going to tell you right quick. So Tracy and I, that argument I was telling you about, she called me back to the car and she said, Ralph, I took a step towards you today and I just want you to remember that. I want my friend back. My wife is my best friend. Hands down, 100%, my best friend. That's how we talk to each other. But my heart was so hard, I couldn't even accept what she was saying. And I can't even tell you right now what I was upset about. I, I, I don't even remember. And I went upstairs. We were here at the church. Ray, your pastor. Yeah, me. I went upstairs and I was like praying. I'm like, God, why is my heart so hard right now? What's wrong with me? Help me, God. And I text her and apologize. I'm like, babe, I don't know. Yeah, nah, nah. And she's like, I'm praying for you. So all she said. And it wasn't even an hour, guys. And something broke in me. Like, and I just started to weep. I'm like, God, you know what, man? What's wrong with me? Help me, God. I want to reconcile. I want to get this right. But I don't know. I'm still upset. Would you help? And something broke. And I FaceTimed. I was like, did you really pray for me? She was like, yeah. I pray for you. Because see, here's the thing. When your spouse is going through something, man, you got to hit your knees and call out God to help them out. And I'm telling you, I'm a witness. Like, we, we don't get it right all the time. Man, is your first call to God or is it to your mother-in-law or your mom or your dad? I'm coming back home. No, man, maybe we need to call out on God. Be like, God, you know what? I need you to move right now. I need you to move in, this, in his life or her life. It's so joining together in the present. And you know what? I used to have a coach that says this. He says, know your role and do your job. Know your role and do your job. Now, I'm not going to attempt to tell women what they should be doing in marriage because I don't want that heat from y'all. <laughs> but as a man, here's what the Bible says. In Proverbs, it says, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So even on a bad day, my wife is my good thing. She's attached to my relationship with God. Here's what the Bible says. Rejoice with the wife of your youth. If the Bible says rejoice with the wife of your youth, meaning that our, our relationship be, should be one of longevity, we should continually, I should continually rejoice with her and be excited to see her, and excited, have joy when I see her. It says in Job 31, and this is one of my favorite verses, make a covenant with your eyes that I might not lust after a young woman. God has called me as a man, as a husband, not to stare at women, to bounce my eyes. Bro, you can't window shop. I can't window shop. Here's why you can't window shop, because what you dwell on, you're drawn to. So if you dwell on your wife, guess what? You be drawn to her. The Bible tells me in 1 Peter 3, 7, dwell with my wife with understanding so that I can be, so that we are co-heirs, heirs of the grace of life together so that my prayers won't be hindered. You want to hinder your prayers? 
Just start treating your wife a certain way. Because unless the Lord build a house, those that labor, labor in vain. See, God builds the house when he's the center and it's attached with love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So how do we communicate? We're face-to-face. I'm going to give you an acronym, TPA. Everybody write this down, TPA. TPA. We want to communicate at the right time. Everybody say time. Right place. Everybody say place. With the right attitude. TPA. Time, place, attitude. The right time, the right place, the right attitude. And we can talk face-to-face. It's funny. We were in our marriage group the other day, and I was like, oh, yeah, Tracy and I, we love to talk in the morning over coffee. And she was like, no, nah, not really. I was like, what do you mean? I'm enjoying us talking in the early over coffee because I'm an early riser. She was like, nah, I'm sleepy, bro. But you know what she enjoys? When we get in the car and we just go for a ride. And there's no distractions. And all we can do is focus on each other and just ride around, just ride all over the St. Pete, all the way back, just, just kind of just ride around talking to each other. I don't know what your deal is, but here's the thing. Y'all face-to-face talk to each other. Ask her. Ask him, what's the right time, place, and attitude? And if you're struggling with your communication at Grace Family Church, we have some resources for you. And I, I did a poll. I asked the, the, um, the, the pastors, and I was like, guys, what are people struggling with? You know what they said to me? Most marriages just need somebody to talk to. They don't even need counsel. They just need somebody that they just, that's going to listen to them. Do you know you can get that at home builders? Like, you just sit at a table with people that's just like you, that's imperfect, and just say, man, you know what? We're struggling right now. What are y'all doing to, to, to help out with that? We got communication reset. Maybe you got to re- reset the way that you talk to each other. Maybe you got some baggage that you're bringing in. Or marriage intensive. I encourage you to go to the website. I encourage you to text the word connect to 81313 and figure out what we have for you right now. Because in Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says this, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. There's even bet, there are three or even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Man, your marriage, I mean, y'all on the same team. Like we're in together. We're, we're, we're in this together. Last but not least, marriage is a becoming one for the future. Marriage is becoming one for our future. Now, here's the interesting thing. I think I skipped the second verse, but here's the interesting thing. The interesting thing is this, is that Ephesians 5, 31, 33 says this, as the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it's an illustration. It is an illustration. Everybody say illustration. Don't say it like you mean it. It's an illustration. You know what an illustration is? A picture. It's a picture. It's a picture of the way that Christ and the church are one. So I say again, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So when I think about this, I think about that marriage is a picture that God wants to paint for the world, full of grace, full of mercy, full of forgiveness, and full of truth. You know, and so I want to encourage you to be proactive in your marriage. How can you be proactive? Here's how you're proactive, guys. You don't wait until things are going bad. You, you, you become proactive. You don't become reactive. Here's a suggestion. Go to a marriage retreat every year. Invest in your marriage. In fact, if you could grab your books and you look at this QR code on the back, you can scan this QR code and we have a marriage retreat coming up in August. You can set the date right now this weekend. In fact, ladies, I give you permission. Make sure the date is set before the Super Bowl tomorrow. Just stand in front of the TV and hold this up. Like, you know what I mean? Don't do that. Guys, don't get mad at me. But no, set the date now. Here's the thing. How often, Tracy and I, we, we, we're spontaneous. We don't, we're empty nesters and we can kind of come and go. But do you have a date night? Do you have a time where... No kidding, you're going on a date together. Some, it's weird that we get married, we stop dating. That's what got you married. That's, that's what got you there. Do the things that got you there. It's that simple. How about this? How about going somewhere overnight? Hang out overnight. Last time we went somewhere, guess where we went? Tampa. 
We live in Land of Lakes. So we went out of town to Tampa. <laughs> we had a great time. Like, go somewhere and enjoy. Like, that's the stuff you did when you were dating. Figure out how to go on a trip together. Explore some things. What is she like? What do you like? Like, keep it fresh and keep connected and stay connected. Be proactive in your marriage. You know, this past week, we had 448 couples show up for home builders at all our campuses. 448 couples. Almost 900 people showed up and said, man, I'm here to work on my marriage. And maybe, maybe, and here, we have pre marriage as well. So we have, if you're seriously dating, we invite you to come on out. Because you're in community. Like, we desire and we desire to help your marriage grow, to help your family follow Jesus. And if we help your marriage, we're going to help your family follow Jesus. That's the goal. And if you didn't come this weekend, guess what? This past week, I'm inviting you to come out this week. There's still room for you. I don't care what campus it is, there's still room for you. Maybe you need communication reset. Maybe you need marriage intensive. No matter what you need, talk to your campus pastor, pull someone aside and say, hey, look, man, I, I want to jump into this. Or maybe you're one of those marriages that's been around a long time. You got the bumps and bruises. You done been through it all. You done recovered from some stuff. You done, you done left your past and now you're joined together in the present. In fact, you're one of those people like a, a couple I met the other day. You're one of those people that he, he kisses his wife every time he passes her in the house. Every time he, every time he walks past her, he kisses her. I was like, bro, that's, that's next level right there. And they're retired. They stay in it. They're in it. Like maybe you're one of those. Guess what? If you're one of those couples, we need you to be a table host and let some of us know how to do what you're doing. Because see, here's the reality of it. One day, all of us are going to leave this earth. And the forgiveness is going to be gone. That gets us into heaven. The mercy is going to be gone. That gets us into heaven. The grace is going to be gone. That gets us into heaven. Mercy, grace, forgiveness will be gone. And all that will be left of our marriage is the cross. Because it's an illustration of Christ and the church. It's two people that have committed themselves to following God, allowing him to be the glue, walking in love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. For my granddaughter, Gigi, this is what I want to leave. G, would you just remember? Would you just remember that Papa and, and Nana trusted the Lord and that we believed in the covenant of marriage and that this represents the one you need to trust. And it wasn't perfect, baby. It wasn't perfect, but it was worth it. It's the only thing that God uses to illustrate what Jesus did on the cross for us. There's no other illustration in the Bible, guys, but this. Marriage. It's on God's heart. He designed it for his glory. And so maybe you're here right now and you're saying, Ralph, you know what? I didn't grow up around that. I don't know nothing about that. But what I do know as an individual, I need to trust the one who died on the cross for me. That's where it all begins. That's when Tracy and I opened the box. We started out rough. And maybe you're in a rough spot. But today is the day where you're like, you know what? We're going to smooth this out and allow God to heal my individual life. So would you bow your heads? All over Tampa, online. Man, today just might be the day that you take a step. Your next step will be your best step. And the best step that you can take is trust in Jesus Christ for eternal life. And so as a community of faith, with every head bowed, every eye closed, and even online, I want us to pray this prayer together. Everybody say, Father God, I ask you today to come into my life, to be my Savior and my Lord. Forgive my sin. I place my faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Live in me by the power of your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. 
Now keep your head bowed. And if you're online and you made a decision, can you just put it in the chat? But at our campuses and on this campus, you say, Ralph, man, I committed or recommitted my life to Christ. Would you just put your right hand up in the air? I'm trusting Jesus Christ, man. Tonight I prayed that prayer for the first time or maybe the last. There you go. I see you. Anyone down here on the floor? Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's give God some praise right quick. Campus pastors, I'm going to turn it over to you for some next steps.